Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking this morning at a book I've reviewed before, some years ago now. This is the book, Identification. It's got a subtitle, Investigation, Trial and Scientific Evidence. Now in a second edition. It's written by Paul Bogan, Queen's Counsel, who produced the original version, first edition, and he's joined by Andrew Roberts. That's the back of it. It's published about now by Jordans. You can see the book itself. Standard structure. You've got paragraph numbering at the sides. You've got useful footnotes, which you can see at the bottom. There's a very good uh, index at the back, which you can see. Plus a number of appendices, including all the stuff about pace, which of course would be directly relevant and a must. The chapter headings are quite useful too, because you'll see that they're, they're sort of split down. There's a massive amount of case law. Now, this book is a very important book for anybody involved in criminal matters, because ID evidence is so important. We've given it the title, A Thorough Insight into ID Evidence. And this is what we say. I'm not going to repeat everything, because the actual review will be on the web and everywhere else and being published. But what we're saying, it's been a while since we reviewed the first edition of this excellent book, seven years to be precise, and it remains a massive support source for those of us involved in adducing identification or ID evidence in mainly criminal and very occasionally the civil uh, proceedings. Um, I'm going to call it ID evidence because that's what we know it as in general terms. Jordans have taken over uh, the publication and Paul Bogan, Queen's Counsel, is now joined by, as I've indicated, a distinguished academic, Andrew Roberts. The subject area, as we all know, is top-heavy with case law and as the authors have observed, the Court of Appeal decisions represent a significant proportion of appellate business, so their fair share of unfair uh, unsafe convictions does reflect the special place that ID evidence occupies in the investigation and prosecution of crime. The structure of the book remains basically the same as it was for the first edition um, and the introduction is then followed by parts on investigation, trial and scientific evidence. What's new is the much expanded text on the psychology of ID evidence and the changes in part one of uh, the book covering Code D, part one being obviously at the, the, the front. Um, the important uh, other principal change is the provision of more detailed guidance on the procedures for obtaining evidence of recognition from images, very much part of the new technology era we're in. Bowen and Roberts provide an outline of the prospective legislative reform of what they describe as the ongoing jurisprudential saga over the retention and use of fingerprint and DNA samples involving unconvicted suspects. And as I indicate, uh, this issue is going to run and run. Clearly there are still lots of arguments on both sides. The effects of the 2003 Criminal Justice Act um, on hearsay and bad character have led to a reworking of the main chapter in Part 2. And I think, in fact, there's a lot of assistance here for Defence Council in, in the work that they have uh, produced. And there's a digest of recent case law, which I found particularly helpful. With the continued advances, of course, in forensic science, the law's not stood still, so the chapters in Part 3 have also been revised, and they look very much more at the forensic techniques, statistical analysis of the findings, and the potential shortcomings which we have with ID evidence. And as the authors say, the contribution of two minds rather than one, combining academic and practical expertise, gives the practitioner assistance in the original aim of the book, which of course was to provide a better understanding of the law and practice, practice relating to ID evidence. It's something that's crucial in the bar exams, for instance. It's very, very important for anyone involved in criminal matters, and um, in just over 600 pages with the 18 chapters, um, the criminal practitioner, we think, is given a thorough insight into the, this particular area of criminal practice. We said of the first edition that this is a gem of a book for practitioners because it brings together all the difficulties associated with adducing ID evidence on both sides. It still is, 
and a fundamental title, we think, for your criminal practice library. So thank you to um, Bogan and Roberts uh, and to Jordans for taking this on and um, thank you for listening to me. Bye-bye.